Bees are fascinating creatures, which is why in the Quran, a whole chapter is dedicated to the bee, called an nahl This literally translates to the bee, and it describes the bee's way of life and how Muslims should be more like them. The Quran says Allah inspired the bee, which indicates a level of intense divinity, as this word usually depicts God's communication with holy chosen people. This is what makes the bee stand out as an important creature. The Quran also describes aspects and miracles about the bees that were confirmed by scientists centuries later. Specifically, the numbers 16, 68, 69. Bees are specifically made up of either 16 pairs of chromosomes. In the case of the queen bee, or 16 single chromosomes in the case of drones. The chapter of the bee is the 16th of the Quran. And your Lord revealed to the bees, take for yourself among the mountains, houses, and among the trees in that which they construct, then eat from all the fruits and follow the ways of your Lord laid down for you. There emerges from their bellies a drink varying in colors, in which there is healing for people. Indeed, that is a sign for people who give thought. In the first part of the verse, Allah commands the bee to choose a place as its home. This phenomenon is actually observed in nature today. The female bees, both the queen and workers, are the heart of the hive. They are responsible for finding and building the hive. The second part of the verse talks about the process of making honey and its benefits. The bee collects the nectar and pollen from different flowers and create the honey in its body. They then regurgitate the honey into the wax cells they make. There are different types of food that come from honey, and it comes in a variety of colors. This bee food can range from regular light brown honey to a deeper dark color to a very light white hue. In reality, our hive is our home, and our colony is our family. No matter what your role is in the house, each member has a valuable contribution to ensure the success of everyday endeavors. In Islam, the ultimate goal of a typical Muslim family is to achieve Allah's promise of eternal paradise. If every member of the family acts accordingly to his or her role, you can reach anything your heart desires. When talking about medical benefits, honey is known to be a natural healing supplement. This has been documented in various scriptures dating back centuries ago. Many cultures use honey to treat internal and external ailments, such as ulcers, wounds, and other diseases as well. Lessons that Muslims can learn from honeybees. Bees teach us how to thrive by obeying one God, Allah. In the verse, indeed in that is a sign for a people who give thought, Allah speaks directly to the bees. His command for them to build their homes and make their honey was followed, and mankind is able to reap the benefits of the sweet healing honey. Allah is said to have conveniently placed honeybees on earth to be of service to us, such simple creatures, yet quite obedient. This is how Allah wanted His followers to be. Another way to see this is how bees pledge their loyalty to their queen. Once they are part of a certain hive and colony, they dedicate their lives to improving the colony itself. Drone bees go as far as to willingly sacrifice their lives for the benefit of the colony. An obedient Muslim must be able to follow the foundation set forth by Allah and Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him to achieve eternity in paradise. By following Allah's word and doing good, we are promised eternal life with him. There is thus a clear argument in this that the exactitude in skill and ingenuity is not due to the bee but due to the omnipotence of him who has created it on such pattern and appointed it to the service of mankind. Bees teach us how to be pure. Bees only collect the nectar of fresh flowers. 
that have not been touched by other bees, depicting honesty and loyalty. This also makes the nectar they get pure, since it's from an untouched source. This purity is guaranteed by Allah Himself, and it is a Muslim's duty to be loyal and honest as well. We observe how easy it is for younger Muslims to let go of their purity sometimes, especially among the younger generations, and commit haram, since it is much easier to live this way or because they want to get accepted in certain communities. This is not the way of Allah. It is through halal means that they are able to keep the sources of our blessings, as well as themselves, pure in their eyes. To cite an example, let's say a Muslim person owns a restaurant. Even though they know serving alcohol is haram, they still do it because it brings them more profit to their business or in gaining more customers. If you follow the halal teachings of Allah, you would know that there is no greater reward than the promise of paradise. It can never be replaced with any form of riches you may receive in the mortal world. As humans, we are quite flawed and we will find ways to make excuses. It is best to keep in mind that excuses will get you nowhere. And there is no blessing from haram that no amount of prayer can make up for it unless you are willing to change. If you take the bees as an example, they never collect nectar belonging to other bees, even though it's easier for them and the reward that it's pure and their colony remains strong. Bees teach us to stay strong as a community. Most bee species live in colonies and they would need the participation of each and every member to stay alive and to be a well-functioning strong hive. Female worker bees take the time every day to go out of the hive and find food. By the time they get back to the hive, instead of placing the collected nectar in the individual cell themselves, they choose to pass the nectar by regurgitating it to their co-worker. This process goes on until the nectar turns into honey and reaches the cell of the honeycomb. They then fan it with their wings until it becomes stickier. By the time it is ready, they seal the cell with a wax lid to keep it clean. The bee colony always works as a team, and each member is given a role. Another example of how bees work together as a team is during winter time. In order for the hive to stay warm, they start clumping together and constantly moving in order to create heat. This heat keeps the queen warm, which keeps the hive livable during the harsh weather. Allah taught bees how to dance in order to show fellow bees the location of the flowers in order for them to follow them. A single beehive can have thousands of bees all working together to provide food, shelter, and protection to their queen and the rest of the colony. They travel over 50,000 miles and visit thousands of flowers just to make a jar of honey. In retrospect, a honey bee can't exist on its own at all, just like people. They would need to be with other bees and follow their roles in order to thrive. Just like us Muslims, we need to be able to take responsibility and work well with other people in our community to live in harmony, make our community stronger, and have a positive impact on the society we live. People nowadays are constantly in pursuit of wealth, which can make them very selfish sometimes. We see this every day. How large companies exploit lowly employees. How siblings enter rivalry with one another over inheritance. And how politicians are consumed by greed. Bees live in a symbolic relationship with plants too. Even though they take nectar from there, they pollinate the plants in return. This allows the plant species to thrive. Muslims must always resist these actions and refrain from being selfish, influenced by negative ideals, and learn to share their blessings, look out for each other, and be helpful to fellow believers when needed. This doesn't specifically mean to be completely selfish, but it is essential to treat everyone around you with kindness 
and be considerate of others and whatever you do. It doesn't take much to just be a good person. After all, as Muslims, we must always behave as role models to other people. Conclusion Bees are one of the most magnificent creatures created by Allah ever to grace our earth and that we Muslims can learn a lot from them. As simple as the bee may look, they have a great system and structure that have a great influence put on them by Allah. The goal for us Muslims is to reach the promised paradise and by following the way of the bee, we will be able to attain this goal.